Hey everybody, it's Jamie Raskin, uh, sending out um, lots of good vibes to all of my constituents in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District in Montgomery and Frederick and Carroll counties. Uh, here for my favorite time of the week, Local Hero, when we get to recognize the people who are doing the work so often invisible that is necessary to us being such a great place to live. And I, I get to recognize today as our Local Hero, Claudia Tolson, who is a victim witness coordinator uh, with the police department in Tacoma Park, where she's been working in the field of victim services since 2014. Um, she studied criminal justice. Uh, she's been with Tacoma Park for more than two years and was, I think, in Rockville before that, but she can tell us. Um, mm -hmm. But most of her experience has been working with victims of domestic violence, which is her focus. And we have domestic violence um, victim witness coordinators all over uh, the state of Maryland. And so we wanted to recognize her because she's so emblematic of this commitment that we've made and her work is so important. And I should say, I got to know her um, because of, uh, of uh, a threat that I received and I ended up having to get a restraining order and she walked me through it. And I realized how absolutely essential and critical her work is for people who need to go and get uh, a protective order. So um, for the work that you've been doing day in and day out, uh, especially in the domestic violence field, Claudia, I want to um, uh, salute you and uh, we will recognize you as our local hero this week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Raskin. Um, as I mentioned to Ms. Connor, I'm, I'm very humbled to be a part of this segment and I thank you for, you know, appreciating what, what we do, what victim advocates do. Um, this is definitely work that I love doing. Um, so I guess that's why I've been able to maintain doing it for so long. Well, um, why don't we plunge right in and you tell us about um, the kinds of cases that come to you. Obviously, you know, you don't need to name names, but tell us about what's going on in people's lives when they come to you and what are the services that you're able to provide to them? Well, with uh, the city of Tacoma Park, so I am the victim witness coordinator for Tacoma Park Police. Um, I communicate and I reach out to um, victims of general crime. That could be anything. It could be identity theft. It could be um, someone who's been the victim of an assault, a, a robbery, a carjacking. It really just depends on what the nature of the crime is. But my focus has been more so with domestic violence as well as serious um, assaults, serious um, rapes, sexual offenses, things like that. So I do find that these kinds of cases need the most assistance only because of the nature of the case. And usually there are um, complex processes, oh, excuse me, that have to happen in court and different procedures that take place. And the average citizen may not know about these procedures in court. So I'm essentially there to, to be a, an assistant, to make sure that they understand the process, make sure that they know they have a support system within the police department. So if someone is a victim of um, domestic abuse and violence and they're mm -hmm. struggling to get out and we know how difficult that is on so many levels, mm -hmm. um, what are the different kinds of assistance that you can provide? Do you help in terms of preparing them to be a witness in a criminal trial? Do you just help them uh, to get a protective order mm -hmm. uh, to stop the violence in the future? Um, you can you help them figure out even family law kinds of stuff, divorce? And I mean, well, what do you do? Um, so I'm not an attorney. So unfortunately, I cannot provide legal advice to victims or, or to clients. Um, but I try to explain to them what the processes are, what the procedures are. So for a domestic violence victim, of course, we want to make sure that their safety is, is number one. We want to make sure that they're in an environment where they can reach out and can find resources, because if they're still in a dangerous environment, then, of course, it's going to be very difficult for them to even get a hold of these services in the first place. So definitely trying to secure their, their immediate safety, whether that's contacting the Montgomery County Crisis Center. This is specific to Montgomery County, um, but the Crisis Center does help with finding domestic violence shelter for victims. 
So usually that's our first point of contact, or if they live in another county, we'll contact the county to where there could be a domestic violence shelter. Um, once they are in a safe place and once they're able to start other procedures, I definitely recommend obtaining protective orders and I walk them to, through the entire process. That could be from you know, printing out the paperwork, filing the paperwork, um, helping to prepare them to, to the process of actually going through a hearing and obtaining the order and going to court and filing everything um, essentially to its closure. So there could also be a criminal case associated depending on the nature of the assault or the nature of the domestic violence. Um, so a lot of different components can arise out of a domestic violence case. Um, and it really just depends on what the person needs. It could be a situation where they need access to um, food so we can connect them to food banks, food pantries, things like that. Um, they could be in need of utility assistance, definitely connect them with that. Or it could just be a situation where um, they're moving and they want to make sure that their address isn't available to the offender. So then we would talk about the address confidentiality program that exists in Maryland. So it really just depends on what the person needs. I like to think that um, it's, it's almost like I'm a secretary. I do whatever you need me to do. I do whatever, you know, is the immediate need. And, you know, we're just going to make, make well, sure. It's done. The, the thing that impressed me so much about you, Claudia, when you helped me with the political crazy mm -hmm. threat I got was how you knew everybody at the courthouse. Everybody knew you. The judges mm -hmm. loved you. You seemed to be so much a part of you know, the institutional situation that was very comforting to me. And I can imagine that would be very reassuring to the people that you represent. Let me just ask you, finally, mm -hmm. um, given that you deal with so much violence and so much anger, um, you know, these domestic violence situations can be really terrible and dangerous, as you say, but you're also dealing with people who are the victims of other kinds of crimes, assaults and robberies and carjackings mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, how do you uh, keep your spirits up and maintain uh, such equanimity and such a positive outlook? Um, well, I learned early on in my career that um, those that are in victim services, it's, it's imperative to practice self-care because there's, there's something called compassion fatigue where you know, you care so much, you put in so much of yourself and you devote so much time to, to try to get positive outcomes for the people that you work with. But of course, that's, you know, usually not the nature of the world. So I just try to stay positive um, once it can get a little difficult sometimes when, you know, it's let's say it's five o'clock and the workday stops there. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it goes over. Sometimes, you know, I have to come in or I'm contacted or I have to send emails and things like that. Um, so outside of work and outside of, of this arena, I just try to, you know, focus on, on the natural world, focus on, um, trying to be outdoors, trying to be active. Um, it's a little, it's been difficult with the pandemic. Um, but just, you know, making sure that I know, and I tell my family that, you know, I care about them. I'm always there for them, spending time with them. Um, and just getting lost in a lot of, DIY shows and just, you know, the newest shows that come out, I'd like to get thrown into their world because, you know, it's the brief reprieve from all the craziness that goes on. So that helps. Well, look, we honor you for your devotion. Um, thank you for giving us such a great glimpse into the work of victim witness coordinators. Uh, people who are alas, victims of crime should know that you are out there and other people who do your work and certainly people who are caught in uh, the nightmare of domestic violence should understand there are people like you who really uh, have uh, flashlights and are able to find a pathway through out of the darkness. So thank you, Claudia, uh, for all of your great work, for your great attitude. Um, you are our local hero this week, and we appreciate so much everything you do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. I really appreciate it.